Hello everyone, it's Farkad here. And in this structure overview, I'm gonna cover the basic fire and the campfire in the forest. Now they're both essentially the same structure, though they've got a few important differences. I'll provide a conclusion at the end of the video, which you can use if you're short on time. Timestamps will be in the description as well. Now the reason I haven't been uploading, I'm just gonna type it out in text and put it on the screen, pause and read at your leisure, but I just wanna get on with the video. Now both the fires are on the first page as you open up the survival guide. The basic fire costs seven leaves and two sticks, whereas the fire pit costs seven leaves, four sticks, and seven rocks. Now while I'm saying all this, I'm gonna show you the tests that I've done. This is a very complicated structure overview because the fires are actually quite buggy and it's been very difficult to figure out how they work, the specifics anyway. In terms of burn length, the initial time you place it, the basic fire lasts six minutes and 40 seconds and the campfire lasts 10 minutes. Now consecutive burns, when they can be relit, the basic fire lasts 33 seconds and the campfire lasts 50 seconds. However, the basic fire dies after two or three consecutive of reignitions. And during testing, it died sometimes after the second light and sometimes after the third light. But the campfire can be reignited multiple times. I believe it's unlimited. It won't ever die. But the burn length is severely shortened. Now they both cook and boil food and make stews at the exact same speed. There is no difference. Both will attract a cannibal patrol at least once. Now I'm not sure if it's been lit or not. It triggers an event in a game that causes a patrol to come out to you, to that location. If you don't happen to be there at the time, well, I guess it's nothing. All fires seem to do this. Both the fires have no collision, which means you can walk over them and they can set you on fire. They can also set enemies on fire and animals. The amount of damage they do is dependent on the difficulty mode. In peaceful, normal, and hard, they do less damage to the player and more damage to the enemies. In hard survival, they do a lot more damage to the player and a lot less damage to the enemies. If you happen to be wearing stealth armor while you catch on fire, you'll lose pretty much all of that stealth armor. It burns off you. I have an armor video that goes into a lot more depth for this, but that's outside the scope of this video. Animals and mutants won't target these fires, but if they swing at you while you're near one, they can break them and they've got very low HP, as in they'll die to one hit. Now cooking meat on both these fires takes 25 seconds. If you leave the meat on there, at a minute 30, they will burn. So another minute and five seconds will cause the meat to burn. If you place spoiled meat on a fire, it will convert into burnt meat. So the way to explain this is that fresh meat and spoiled meat, after they burn, have the exact same values. They can't make you sick, they just give little values to your hunger, and they dehydrate you a lot. So spoiled meat is entirely useless, so you can still get calories from it for hard survival. Also, spoiled meat can go on stews. Stews are more complicated though. There's only one stew recipe that you really need to know because it's very useful. It is one meat, one herb, and one mushroom. It's called a balanced stew. It's the only stew I generally make. It's a good way to use up spoiled meat as well as the small meats, but you can use oysters and all sorts of things as well. And it's a good way to eat heads if you want to eat a head. As funny as that sounds, it's actually very useful because heads don't have much use. One of the biggest things I gathered from testing in this video is that campfires should be the permanent solution. Basic fires should be the temporary solution. For example, when you're cooking, if a basic fire dies while you're cooking something, if it's a pot, it will fall off it. And if you exit and reload, the pot will disappear. If you're cooking meat, the meat will disappear. Though I have seen times where it has not disappeared and it's been very confusing. Now, if you place an empty pot on the fire and don't add anything, after 30 to 40 seconds, the pot will just fall off it. If you have one ingredient in there, at least it won't fall off. It will fall off the basic fire if it does die. Just don't cook on basic fires. It's one of the major points of this video. We're cooking stews on the fire. The stew doesn't start cooking until the last ingredient is added. Also with the balanced stew, you can add water or not. It doesn't matter, it's up to you. If you're making a stew without water once it's finished cooking if you save and reload the pot will magically have water i don't know why it's an easy way to get water in it but it's rather tedious both these fires can also be used to light bodies on fire after you kill a cannibal. Now, the reason I like to use the basic fire for lighting bodies on fire is once the bodies burn out and break into bones, their flame disappears. So if you're using a basic fire after the bodies burn out, you'll know where those bones are. Many times I've used a spray can or a flare gun to set them on fire. And after they burn out, if it's nighttime, I can't see crap. So having that fire there is a good marker for where they are. 
And considering it's only two sticks and seven leaves, it's a good idea. If you place fires close to water, they won't be able to be lit. You can still build them, but you won't be able to light them. This is fairly common sense. You can place it close enough that the tide will wash over it and won't put it out. So it's best just to put it at a higher ground. Keep in mind with caves as well, there's like little puddles of water. If you place it near them, it won't be able to be lit. It's very annoying. For lighting fires in the game, the lighter has unlimited uses. It will never go out. There's no kindling system in the game like Strainer Deep or Green Hell. You just use your lighter. But they can be lit with other things, such as molotovs, hairspray, flare gun, leaf pile traps, molotov traps, etc. Basic fires are generally a better option in caves as there's less rocks. There are some rocks in caves, but you need seven, and without a rock bag, you can only carry five. So it's best just to make a basic fire. When using these to burn bodies also, you'll get six bones and one skull. If you turn your back on the skull, it will despawn. For some reason, the game has this thing against skulls. So you've got to pick them up straight away if you're after them. Now, I did try to test to get some footage to show you using fires as a defensive method, but the cannibals were too interested in attacking the wall. They can go over them, though they might detect them as collision. So they'll probably avoid them, which is probably why I've never seen animals actually run through a fire because they detect it as a collision thing. It's like trying to run rabbits into a rabbit trap. They'll just run around it because they detect it as a colliding object. They have to go in on their own. But it's making me think that using fires might actually be a makeshift gate that you can probably use because the enemies won't go over it. Though I need to test this a little bit more because this will be a major exploit because you won't have to use gates, which can be annoying because you have to open then close them. And if you forget to close them, then you've got a problem on your hands. The forest doesn't have any sort of smoke feature. Now what I mean by that is that if you build a small room that's completely enclosed and you make 20 fires and light them, you won't smoke yourself out and die. That's not a feature in this game. They do, however, create a thermal system where if you've got an enclosed house and a fire is at the other end of the house, it can warm the entire house, though it's complicated. Fires will defrost the player, so if the player is cold, it can make the player feel warm again. Now, being cold isn't that big of a deal in the forest. If you stand still for long enough, you will take damage. And also, if you are cold, your energy drains quicker. Now, it does rain in the snow, but it looks like more snow rather than actual rain. I can't work out what it looks like, but it does fill up your water collectors and it will affect fires. Now, it was very difficult to work out how rain affected fires, though with help from Zebulon, figured it out. So basically what it does is that it halves the length of the fire, for the campfire anyway. For the campfire, it brings it down from 10 minutes to 5 minutes. For the basic fire, it brings it from 6 minutes 40 to 4 minutes, and so on. Zebulon made this up for the wiki, so you can look at it to see what it does for the times with other fires, and its use state, etc. Now we're getting into the fuel section, and this section was the most difficult to test because it is random, and it took me a while to figure that out. And how I confirmed it was I lit four fires at the exact same time using hairspray and then timing it, and they all went out at different times. Each time I tested it, none of the fires went out at the same time. I tested it with one fuel and two fuel, and it was still randomized. This section of the video is why it's taken me a week to make this video, because the amount of testing I had to do with it. The fuel range can vary quite a lot. It seems like the differences can be up to a minute for the same amount of fuel. Possibly the reason for this is that fires were added at the start of the game, so they're more inclined to have bugs, similar to the basic structures. Now, I'm not going to read out all the numbers of the tests I did, because I did do quite a lot of tests. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show it on the screen and give you a rundown of what's best to use. Now, if you're using a basic fire and you want to cook with it, adding one fuel to it will make sure that water will boil. It'll bring it over 40 seconds, providing it doesn't explode, which is risky. Just don't use it. I also tested standing fire times here as well, just to add more accuracy to the test. Now, adding one fuel is generally a good idea when you reload the fire, because you're getting the most bang for your buck. You just quickly do it after you've lit it. But the max time you can add, from what I can tell, is five cash. This will bring the timer up to its max. It will actually burn a little bit longer than its initial burn time, I believe. Especially for the campfire. I haven't tested the other ones too much. The reason I tested the campfire so much is that it's the most useful fire. The basic fire can break after two to three usages, which can give inaccurate results. And the standing fire, well, I haven't even made a video about that yet. But after five cash, the time's only increased by a max of like 40 seconds. And I added insane amounts of fuel. At 10 cash, it was 10 minutes 20. 20 cash was 10 minutes 45. 25 cash was 10 minutes 25 and 50 cash was around 10 minutes 25 as well. So after five fuel, you're pretty much wasting your time because there's a pause between each time you add fuel. It's around a second and a half or maybe a second. Now it doesn't sound like much, but you stand there looking at a fire doing nothing but pressing a button. I didn't test using three fuel for the campfire and basic fire, 
I was going to, but I've spent so long on this video that I just am done. From testing, I could not find any difference between using leaves and using cash. They actually changed the default to cash when you go to place it on the fire. It used to be a leaf that come up first, so players would just automatically use leaves, but they changed it to cash because cash doesn't have any other use. Now I'll quickly cover why I destroy my fires in the playthrough. It's sort of like a realism thing, but also to remove assets. So the less buildings that are in the game, the better the game's gonna run. Now if I've got 20, 30 extra fires laying around the place that I'm never gonna use again, the game has to load them in every time I go near them. And also a realism thing is in cleaning up after you finish. I like to pretend that I'm covering my tracks when I'm really not. Difficulty has no effect on fire length or fuel. You'll get the same length of fire no matter what difficulty you're in. Now, adding fuel to a fire that you've just built, the campfire, for example, I tested this three times, added one second to the burn length. So instead of 10 minutes, it lasted 10 minutes and one second every single time. So it's not worth doing. I used to do this thinking it helped. It doesn't. You can place fires inside a fireplace. It doesn't do anything. It may provide a shelter. I didn't even test it, but I don't think you're gonna build a fireplace outside your house. It's just a decoration. Makes your fires look a lot nicer and more realistic as well. If you do happen to catch yourself on fire by stepping in one, jump in the water if you can, or hopefully it's raining or put you out much faster. And hope that it's not on hard survival because the fire damage is astronomically higher. Now these two fires are the only way to cook and boil and make stews. If you place a pot on there, you can use the water skin to take the water out once it's finished boiling. Boiling water takes 40 seconds and cooking stews takes the same length of time as well. You can cook multiple meats on a fire if you wish. You can add quite a lot to them. You only need one or two at max, maybe three. Probably only useful for hard survival because you need calories. Zebulon also provided me with another exploit he found. If the fire goes off with spoiled meat on it, the meat will respawn as fresh. Also, if the fire goes out with a pot filled with water on it, the pot will duplicate. This can be used efficiently with already burnt fires and while it's raining, as the burning time is very short in these conditions. It's up to you whether you use this one. I think I have seen it by accident, but I never really figured out what caused it. But it looks like Zebulon's found the cause. If you have some dried meat, if you place it on the fire for one second, then take it off, it becomes cooked meat. And what that means is that it removes the debuff for dehydration from the meat. So it's a little bit of extra work, but if you want to avoid having to drink more fluid, it's a good way to go. It has been useful for me at times, especially when the only liquid you have on you is soda and you want to keep your calories down and hard survival. It's a good way to do it. So in conclusion, use the basic fire for cooking things once as soon as you've made it or burning bodies or getting warm. I wouldn't recommend using it a second time because it's too unreliable. For cooking and permanent solutions, use the campfire because it doesn't get destroyed when it burns out and also it's free to relight. It's best to add one fuel or five fuel, depending on what you're doing. It really depends if you actually want a fire that's going to burn all the time, you're better off going with a standing skull light or a hanging skull light. And this is probably a no-brainer, but fires provide a light source. But that's it for this video. In the next one, I'll be covering the standing fire. Anyway, if you like this video, make sure you like and subscribe. Cheers.